All right, there was only one way to end today's show with the star of the weekend, the man who went into Sunrise, Florida against Jacare Souza. Everyone doubted him, but he walked in with a smile. He thoroughly dominated the former Strike Force middleweight champion, and now he is a top contender at 185. No one believed in the Joker except for me, Joker. I believed in you, Jack Hermanson. Congratulations, and thank you for doing this. And thank you for having me back on your show. Yes, and uh, you just came home, right? You're in Oslo right now? You just landed a few hours ago? Yeah, a few hours ago, so, uh, yeah. How are you feeling? Great to be back. Uh, uh, I feel great, man. You know, uh, uh, you know, you, you think about the, the the week that was, and I had a great time in Florida, and, uh, you know, the, um, the match as well. Uh, it, it feels great. I'd imagine you're still probably on cloud nine, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, it goes up and down. You're thinking about it and just like, man, yeah, it, it did happen. <laughs> Jack, have you had a moment to sit back and smell the roses here for a second? In the last 28 days, you went to Philadelphia and you submitted a Henzo Gracie black belt in, in David Branch. And now you went to Florida in your first UFC main event and defeated one of the all-time greats in Jacare. Like, ha has this sunk in yet, what you've just done? I don't know, man. Uh, it it, it feels a little bit weird, you know. It, it's always a little bit dream-ish when you get home. You just, yeah. Uh, I, I was away in the state uh, recently, and I, I, I did this. I, I performed, you know, and uh, uh, it's an awesome feeling. And uh, I'm super happy where I am at now. And uh, uh, I'm certainly gonna enjoy this a little bit. I gotta say, I was freaking out. It seemed like you almost got him with your arm and guillotine. And I thought, cause you remember we yep. talked last time, I was gonna have to come and train with you if you pulled that off. Yeah. And it looked like you were actually gonna, it looked like you were actually gonna do it. How close, close. was it? How close? It was super close. Oh my gosh. I, I promise you it, it, it was close. He, he, he was panicking and uh, it was just seconds away, seconds away. But that's, you know, he is probably the only guy that could have got, got out of that one, you know, and that's why he's great at Jiu Jitsu. Uh, it's just because of that, you know, he, he found you still there do we have you jack yep yep okay um could you explain how he pulled that off how he actually got out of it yeah you know most people uh don't, don't know what to do because if they do the tra traditional escape they're going against the choke, and it feels like you're choking your, yourself. So he actually turned his back towards me, and he used his arm to to like uh, scrape off my foot from from, from his back. Uh, and you know, it's kind of a sacrifice move, but that that's what you have to do to to get out of that one. Wow, I would imagine your career, especially now that you've you know you've you've mastered that particular choke. Not many people are getting out of that. Like, is that the first time someone has actually done that to get out of that particular choke? Yeah, it is. Wow. So what's going on in your mind when he does that? Uh, I'm thinking, okay, uh, I gotta. If, this, if I can't pull this off, I, I need to get to a good position, you know. And I was really close to get his back, but then he turned around, and I, I didn't manage manage to do that. But the, uh, if somebody would, um, if the guys in the gym are are going to try that now, I'm gonna try to take their back and and hit another move from that. You know, right. that's what you gotta do. You gotta. Um, evolve with the, with the defense and with the game. So it was sort of a, a lesson for you now, right? Because now you're starting to think, okay, how do I counter that counter? Exactly. That's what's going on. Okay. Were you kicking yourself while it was happening? Like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I was that close to submitting Jacare like that. No, 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 man. I was just like, yeah, you know, next second, next second. You gotta be in in the moment all the time. You can't be in the past, you know. So, uh, just what's up next, you know? That, that's what I'm thinking about. You strike me as a fairly, you know, easygoing guy. You're constantly smiling. You seem like you're always in a good mood. Um, this fight week for you, the fight day, because it was such a big opportunity. Did you feel more pressure than than usual? Did you feel more nervous, or did you feel like essentially like like you're playing with the house's money here? Like like all the pressure's on yeah. him because you're taking this fight on such short notice. Uh, I was just enjoying my position, man. I, 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 this is where I want to be. You know, I want to be the main event. I want a headline card, and uh, uh, that almost took away the pressure from me. I'm just okay. Uh, I'm doing this. I'm doing what I love. I'm in the position that I want to be. Let's let, let's do the best of it. Let's perform uh, and. Uh, that's what, what was in my mind, so uh, I just uh, enjoyed it. Of course, it was a little bit of uh, n n uh, a little bit nervous uh, as, as always, but not more than uh, any of my other fights. 
You landed 148 significant strikes in that fight. That is a new five-round UFC middleweight record. 2.87 significant strike differential. That's the highest in middleweight history. And you landed three takedowns, the most allowed by Jacques Ray in any UFC strike force or dream fight. This was a, a thorough beatdown. Be, be honest with me. When you were envisioning the fight, planning for the fight, thinking about the fight, did you think it would be this one-sided? Um, you know, I, I knew that the, this was the the kind of picture that, 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 that I had in my mind, you know, to hit him and not get hit, you know, hit and move, hit and move. And I knew that uh, his chance was uh, probably to get the, the knockout. But there were very few moments that, in the fight that I think was very, very important. Uh, among those was that when he tried for the takedown, I went for the for the guillotine. So then he didn't want to shoot from uh, from the outside anymore. And uh, you know I move a lot, so when he threw the low kick, I took him down. And then he he didn't want to kick me anymore. You know, so there were a few few things in the fight that was really important and uh, that um, uh, uh, made the outcome. Did he hurt you at any point in the fight? Yeah, you know a little bit. Uh, um, uh, he hits very, very hard, and mm. when he hits you, you know it turns. Uh, <laughs> you will see some stars, but uh, not not too bad though. I did I didn't feel my knee, knees uh, get weak or anything like that, but uh, he scrambled my brains a little bit. Going five rounds, going twenty five minutes, cardio wise, how did you feel at the end? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I caught a, a a cold a couple of days before the fight, oh. and. Uh, um, that was a little bit bugging. It was bugging me a little bit, and uh, I felt it already in my warm up that uh, my heart rate was very high, and I didn't get it down as I usually do. So um, I didn't enjoy the 25 minutes, and I was winding to my corner in between the rounds, just like I'm tired, I'm tired, you know. And uh, uh, so I was very tired. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> I yeah, so I prefer the first round finishes instead of the, the, this uh, t uh, 25 minute fights. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. That's right. And uh, I'm assuming that you are hoping for many more 25 minute fights. So do you think you were just feeling that way because of the cold? Or do you feel like, you know, the short training camp maybe um, came into play as well? You didn't have a lot of time to actually prepare for this 25 minute fight. I don't think the, the, the training camp uh, played any role. I'm always training for 25 minutes, you know, and I'm very comfortable doing that in the, in the gym. And uh, so I, I think it was more of the cold and, uh, you know, maybe also you know, it, it might have um, uh, affected me psychologically, psychologically with, with, the, uh, with the cold as well. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, I know that I'm comfortable with uh, a long fight and uh, I think it's always to my advantage. I'm, I'm one of those guys that uh, have good cardio and, uh, and like to go, you know, uh, or like uh, I'm good at it. I'm good to go uh, high pace, uh, long hard fights. You know, so I think I'm gonna do good in the future in uh, in a similar situation. D does it feel like life has changed for you? Yeah, I think so. You know, the the tension now is more than I can handle <laughs> <laughs> at the moment. So, uh, but I'm enjoying it, man. I'm super happy that people are happy for me and that uh, uh, I, I can, you know. Uh, excite so many people the people uh, uh, like my fights and uh, th that's what it's uh, about you know to uh, to get the fans uh, what I want so so what kind of attention are you getting you're getting a lot of uh, media requests back home a lot of fans reaching out to you yeah uh, everything a lot of fans a lot of friends a lot of media uh, you know the the, the phone is uh, going warm um, and it seems like um, I heard the same you alluded to it in, in the cage on Saturday. The UFC is planning to go to Copenhagen. They are planning to go to Denmark. Uh, this seems like, you know, you're obviously not going to fight June 1st, so the closest fight to your neck of the woods uh, later this year. What a, what a story would be if you can headline that one, right? That would be perfect for you. Amazing, you know, both uh, time-wise and uh, where it's going to be at, you know. Uh, it couldn't be any better. So especially if they if they w would give me a, a big name there, you know, I couldn't f ask for anything more. So I'm uh, I'm hoping for that. I'm gonna push for that. Okay. So who do we want? Let's call our shot here. Who do we want? Yeah, you know, we, we want the the, the, the big boys. Um, <laughs> so I, I have I have three names in mind. Okay. And that's uh, Joel Romero, uh, Kelvin Gastelum, or uh, Chris Weidman. 
are probably okay. probably the ones uh, that that, that uh, make sense uh, for me. I like it. And, and do you do you have a rank like number one? I want this guy. Number two. Number three. Yeah, we go by the rankings there. So I think it's. I'm not sure where Guest the Limit is at now. Um, but uh, Romero is probably the highest ranked, isn't he? Uh, so so uh, I, I think. Um, yeah, to beat Romero, you know, if you beat Romero, people are just like, all right, he deserves the title shot. So that's <laughs> probably the fight that I want. That's but right. He, he's probably he probably is the hardest fight as well. You know, he, he's a hard hard guy to beat, and he's super dangerous. Uh, but but you know, I want to beat the guy the guys that uh, uh, earns me the title. Uh, so uh, if that's him, that's the fight that I want. So so your ranking is correct. Yoel is two, Kelvin's five, and Chris is six. So. Uh, as things currently stand, that that makes a lot of sense. I, I did hear that they're hoping to do Yoel Romero against Paulo Costa, but I think you may have, you know, thrown a wrench in those plans, or maybe you fight the winner yeah. of that fight. I don't know because you certainly. I, I mean, I I would make the case you deserve. If they listen, if they were going to give Jacare a title shot beating you, yeah. why don't you get a title shot beating him? Yeah, exactly. You know, are we fighting on the same, uh, you know, <laughs> rights here? Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, if if I would get a title shot, uh, you know, I would do it tomorrow again. You know, that's, right. <laughs> uh, um, uh, that, that, that's my dream. You know, that's what I want. That's what I'm fighting for. I want to get that title. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I get happy just talking about it. You know, that's uh, that's my goal. So whatever it takes. Did anyone from the UFC talk to you after the fight? I know Dana White was there. Did he come up to you? Did he say anything to you? Any feedback? Yeah, he said, great job, man. Uh, it was impressive. And uh, uh, he's, that's what he said to me backstage. So uh, it was good that he, he watched the fight and I think I did a good uh, a good fight. And uh, I hope that the UFC also, you know, um, takes in consideration that uh, it was so, it was a short notice fight. And I think I, I helped to, to save the card. And, uh, and I hope that I get uh, rewarded for my, uh, you know, yes. for stepping in there. I, I think you should. You, and you mean financially, right? They need to pay you. Uh, no, I, I, you know, that, that's, that's good as well. But uh, I'm thinking more about, you know, uh, I'm there for you. For me, the big, uh, big fights that I need. Uh, right. And uh, I'm happy with b both Branch and, and Jacare. And I hope to, to get those big boys uh, coming so I can reach my goal. That's what I'm about, you know. Uh, money is always good, but that's not why I'm in the sport. I'm, uh, I'm here to win. I want to be a legend. I want to be one of the guys that when you uh, say MMA or UFC, people are going to talk about me. That's, uh, uh, that's what's, what's uh, a reward for me. And and you you're not gonna like you wouldn't entertain the idea of fighting in in Sweden on on June first, right? That's too soon, correct? Yeah, you know I'm gonna be honest with you. My my body is hurting a little bit, so <laughs> okay. it, it needs to, it, it needs to heal. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I I don't doubt that for a second, but I I know you were saying you'd fight tomorrow if it was for the belt. I don't want to you know. It was yeah right. you know if I I would I would fight with uh, all my limbs broken tomorrow for if it was for the belt. <laughs> for the belt that that makes total sense. I mean, what a story this is. I love when these things happen when someone comes up, gets an opportunity, rises to the occasion, and and to beat a guy like Jacare, who I have so much respect for, and I think the entire MMA community has so much respect for. It's really an incredible feat yes, well. that you accomplished this past Saturday, and I wonder. Um, if if this will be it for Jacare, he told me that if he doesn't get a title shot, he would retire. Do you think he should walk away after this? It's so hard to not feel for the guy, man. I just talked with my girlfriend about it, you know. Imagine that guy working so hard for so many years, you know, and he's just been, like, so close, yeah. uh, you know, in his fights. And, and I feel for him, man. And uh, uh, it's a super hard decision when you get up there in the age and... Uh, and you know, well, am I gonna leave my dream behind? You know, uh, it's it's tough. So uh, I'm not sure, man. Uh, he probably needs some time off uh, and reconsider his situation and see if he can uh, make a new plan for himself uh, and see if he's still motivated to to go for that uh, title. That's uh, what it's about for him as well, I think. And this is why I respect you so much and I admire you so much. Here you are, Cloud Nine, biggest win of your career, and you actually feel for the guy. You, you benefited off of his <laughs> loss, but you, you actually have a heart and feel for the guy. That, that says a lot about you. Um, I have been asked on multiple occasions, I will omit who is asking me to ask you, but I've been asked to ask you about the tattoo on your buttocks. Is, do you have a tattoo oh. on your buttocks, Jack? 
<laughs> it's true. I have a tattoo on my buttocks. I, I have a I love MMA tattoo on my <laughs> on my butt. <laughs> really? Why do you have an I love I, MMA tattoo on your butt? I was supposed to do another tattoo. This was, you know, my brother, he has a tattoo tattoo studio. He's a tattoo artist. But before he had his studio, he was just tattooing at home. And he was supposed to write um, something for me, but he didn't have the right size on the needle. So he just like, oh, man, we got to do something else. Uh, I, I, and I was just like, oh, well, what are we going to do? So I just got, came up with the idea. All right, let's do I Love MMA. But I'm not sure if I want want that, uh, you know, uh, where anybody can see it. I'm going to put it on my butt so nobody will jump me in the shower if I get in prison. Oh, my God. So you actually have it. Uh, <laughs> I have it. <laughs> Left one or right one? I'm not sure even. <laughs> <laughs> can you show? No, I'm just I don't joking. Watch too much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool that you knew that, though, because not many do. <laughs> yes. Who do you think told me that? Do you have any guess? I have no idea. Wow. I wonder. <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to out him. Should I out the guy who told me? Should I out my source or should I keep is, it to is myself? It, is it Emil, maybe? Emil Mick? No, it is not. <laughs> All right. I don't know. It, it, is, him. it is Mr. Big Slow, Luke Barnott. Oh, Luke Barnett, my good buddy. <laughs> my good British, British buddy. <laughs> How does he know this? Uh, we have been in the shower many times now. <laughs> <laughs> and does it just say I love MMA or is it in a cage or something? What is it? Uh, it's just the letters, uh, but instead of love, it's a heart. <laughs> <laughs> that is unbelievable. So when you're at the gym, like when you're meeting guys and you're in the shower, they see this, they must think you're a real fighter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and they coming it, uh, commentating it as uh, as well, you know. And I'm just, are you looking at my butt? <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? It's it's, uh, it's pretty big. Oh my gosh! Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. Well, it's all working out. Thank God you're good at MMA. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if I had that. I suck at it, but you're actually a guy who's on the verge of fighting for a belt. It all makes sense. I can't laugh at you. Is that your only tattoo? I can't. No, you have other ones, right? Yeah, I have I have other ones. I have my uh, girlfriend here. Okay. Shout out. Right. <laughs> and then I have like uh, this uh, traditional Polynesian one. Oh, right, right, right. Tribal tattoo. Yeah. And uh, then I have like, I have a, I can show you my, my first one that I did when I was uh, 13 years old. Okay, let's see it. Uh, it's on my shin here. Oh, wow. Is it Oi? Oi, yeah. Yeah. That's the. Uh, it's a kind of punk rock music that I listened to when I was a kid. So, <laughs> wow! And your and your parents yeah. let you get that at thirteen? No, they didn't. Oh, but I did it anyway. <laughs> Were they mad when they found out? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so you're a rebel. You're the Joker. Yeah, you know, when you're in that age, uh, you do many things that uh, you maybe shouldn't do. <laughs> yes. Wow, that is. And by the way, are you gonna get married to your girlfriend? I mean, now that you got her name tattooed on your arm, you got to get married, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, we've been together for seven years now, so I'm I'm just uh, saving up for that big wedding. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, life is good for you now, and it's amazing. Are you a basketball fan, Jack? Um, I don't watch too much uh, sports other than MMA these okay. days, but I can. Uh, Reveal, reveal for you that I was a team captain in my basketball team when I was younger. So oh. I did basketball for five, six years. Okay, because <laughs> you're, you're a very tall guy, so I figured you had the right um, you know, body type. But there's a, a famous basketball yeah. player who plays for the Denver Nuggets. His name is Nikola Jokic, and his nickname is The Joker as well. Did you know this? It is? Yes. <laughs> no, I didn't. And on Saturday, he had a very important game in the playoffs. So at the same time, both of you guys, the two Jokers, were actually doing amazing things at the same time. It was pretty incredible. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yes. You're, you're, you're tied. <laughs> you will. Yeah, yeah. Look yeah. it up. It's amazing. It was like happening at the same time. The Joker in MMA, the Joker in the NBA, both thriving at the exact same time. Awesome. <laughs> I'm the only one who, th who thought that this was cool, but I thought it was just a nice coincidence. Anyway, I will yeah. let you go. You are probably very tired. I really appreciate this, Jack. Congratulations to you. You're such a great guy. I'm so happy for you. Um, what a performance. I'm blown away by what you did in there, and I hope that they give you the opportunities that you're looking for. I hope that you get to fight in, in uh, Copenhagen against a big name. Thank you so much, my friend. Congratulations, and we'll talk to you soon. 
Thank you so much, Ariel. Thank you for having me. All right. It is a pleasure. There I'll he is. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Absolutely. Jack Hermanson. How about that? He's got a tattoo. I love MMA on his butt. I mean, that guy's the real deal.